computers are not into the computer age yet, so you'll just have to do it yourself. We're all in this together. Ten years ago, the Ohio National Guardsmen shot four students and wounded nine others during an anti-war demonstration on the campus of Kent State University. Several books have been written about the incident, and now a four-hour television movie is in production in Gadsden, Alabama. The historical consultant for the movie is Dr. Gregory Payne of Occidental College in Los Angeles. Dr. Payne may know more about this than anybody else about what happened at Kent State. He's considered an authority on the historical and legal aspects of the incident. Welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Nice to be here. Why? Well, first of all, I've got to ask you why you're making the film in Alabama and not in Ohio. Well, I think that's a very good question. Uh, Max Keller of Interplanetary and NBC wanted to, of course, be as historically accurate as possible and make the film on the Kent State campus. Right. The problem was, after talking with the officials at Kent State, the president of Kent State, that it was felt even 10 years after it would still be a very emotional, traumatic event to have actors portraying what occurred. So what was uh, the next step was to look at all of the campuses throughout the country and to try to determine what would be geographically the most accurate in terms of similarity. And Gadsden State was judged mm -hmm. to be the one. And they were cooperative and said... Uh... Very cooperative. I think it's amazing when one looks at the, uh, the actual campus site. There are going to be two different parts of uh, the campus used. But John Philo, who was uh, the Pulitzer Prize winning photographer at Kent State back in 1970, who took the uh, shot over the body of Jeff Miller, uh, came and visited the campus at Gadsden State and was very impressed by the similarity. Why, why do you want to make the movie? What's the purpose of it? I think it's very, very important uh, for us to remember that turbulent period simply because if you look at, say, Arthur Schlesinger and some historians, they're predicting that the 80s is going to be another time where we experience unrest. We have the, we have the draft situation occurring again facing students. So I think there's much to be learned about looking back into the incident at Kent State. And that's one of the concerns of the producer as well as NBC. You brought some of the film with you. Yes, we do. We have footage, uh, which we're going to be looking at now. Okay, the, let's have a look at the footage, right. if we can roll it. Yep, can you tell us what we're seeing? Please? What we're seeing now is the demonstration on Monday uh, prior to the shootings. You can see the guard in the background and the students gathering together. Many of the students who are on the hillside had stopped by on their way to class. Now this is the actual tape, this is old tape. No, this is, the, this is our film. This is not the actual film. And what we see now, of course, is the guard more or less breaking up the rally with tear gas, forcing the students up over Blanket Hill at Kent State. And uh, of course, there's been many articles written, much concern with regard to what actually occurred in terms of the legality of that rally. What we're seeing now is the situation on Sunday night preceding that Monday uh, demonstration. Uh, the guardsmen broke up a sit-in, and there were reports of bayonets. We've just seen one of the students bayoneted, and the students fleeing the area. What are we going to learn from the film that we didn't know about the truth of what happened? Well, I think what we've seen here is every effort being made by NBC and Interplanetary to put together what is historically accurate. We've used not only my research, but we've used the FBI report, the President's Commission. Peter Davies uh, has been a very, very prolific writer. And what we have is a composite of the facts. We're trying to let the facts speak for themselves and minimize any type of editorial content. What kind of cooperation or reaction did you get from the families? The families I have known for the last 10 years, and I think it's, it's safe to say that they are very supportive as long as it's being done historically accurate. I think that they realize that there's much to be learned about Kent State, and uh, I keep in contact with them uh, usually on a weekly basis. I think it's going to be very painful for them to see, but I think it's, it's getting back to the initial question. I think they realize that there's much to be learned. By it. What about the National Guard? What kind of support or, or difficulty did you encounter with them? Well, one thing that was a concern initially was, of course, to try to make it as accurate as possible. And we had hoped that the National Guard in Alabama would cooperate with regard to equipment. It was uh, later determined that they would not, and we learned that it was a directive from the Pentagon. So what we had to do was to go out and purchase all of the military equipment, which got to be very expensive. The National Guard, uh, of course, there was an initial story out of Gadsden that John Basnett, who was a guardsman at Kent State, was told that he, would, that he could not be an extra in the movie and still remain in the National Guard. It was then after uh, this was made public, and I think it went on the AP and UPI, 
that uh, an override came through from a, uh, an officer in Montgomery, and he was permitted to partake. I don't think the National Guard in Alabama have been excited about our doing it, but uh, nonetheless, the film was progressing. Just uh, quickly, and I don't, you don't need to speak specifically about each case, but what is this situation with the litigation, the, the suits by the families? The litigation has actually spanned the last 10 years, and in 1979, <coughs> after uh, nine years of litigation, it was finally decided, of course, what occurred at Kent was four students killed, nine wounded. Mm -hmm. You had the death suits and the injury suits being put together initially, and in 1979, a very traumatic incident occurred where the four students, the four families of the dead students had to decide whether to go on with the litigation or whether to accept a settlement that was offered by those charged in the litigation. They decided for the sake of one of the students who was paralyzed at Kent State that they should go ahead and accept a settlement, which was uh, actually amounted to about $15,000 per student uh, in terms of the dead and around $350,000 for the paralyzed student. So the litigation is basically over, mm -hmm. and there's still many unanswered questions. Hopefully some of those will be resolved in so the So January, uh, Dr. Payne, we will see on NBC the uh, Kent State. Right. right. All right. Thank you very much Thank for joining you. us today, Dr. Gregory Payne. Thank you very much. And we'll be back in about two minutes with more news and Elsa Clinch and another report from Flip Spicely and some other things. Another thing. Two Daddy, did you know that Buffalo Bill was only 15? May 4th will mark the ninth anniversary of the Kent State shootings. Tuesday, a theater group from a West Coast college presented a dramatic reenactment of that tragedy. Wanda Reese has the story. May the 4th, 1970. Today at Kent State University, four students were killed and nine others wounded by Ohio National Guard. Kent State Requiem is a dramatic examination of the shootings at Kent State on May 4, 1970. The slides shown here were taken at the time of the incident. The presentation is performed by seven students of the Occidental College Readers Theater in Los Angeles. The piece chronicles the details leading up to the shooting through the eyes of the victims and one of the victim's parents. The portrayal was written by a forensics professor at Occidental College. Well, initially, Wanda, what we have is we have a slideshow which basically is a synopsis of what occurred in the 60s. And after that, we uh, feel that one of the best ways to inform individuals about Kent State is to show the reactions, or to at least give excerpts of reactions that were actually given in editorials as well as letters to the editor throughout the country. So we have our uh, actors throughout the audience jumping up and giving reactions to the shootings. Why do we have to be subjected to this kind of thing? Jerry Rubin said it right on campus. Get a gun and shoot your parents. These people don't hate kids, but in the last five Payne expressed dissatisfaction with the way this event was handled back in 1970 by the media. And he says the message he hopes to convey with this production is that most of all, these students were human beings. In a memo, secret memo. Finally made public in April 1978. Richard Nixon told Attorney General John Mitchell in August 1970. Prior to any official findings on the shootings, there'll be no federal investigation of the incident at Kent State. This is Wanda Reese. any type of editorial.